panic and fear. Please, Nigerians, please, Nigerians, do not kick out my husband. Military, please do not oust my husband. Do not plan coup. Nigerians, support Bola Metunumbu. He will take us there. Also, the lawyer representing Bola Metunumbu, Olani Pekun, has something to say also. He has also cried out. He has talked about the so-called irregularity. He has talked about the argument as regards the election. And of course, those who are pressing buttons, asking the military to take action. Bola Metunumbu's wife is out, crying to all Nigerians. Do not follow the footsteps of other Africans. Do not follow the footsteps. Please, please, let us fulfill our promise. With the reports of coup right, left, and center in Africa, and of course, meetings, private meetings, plots on how to dethrone, unseat, housed certain politicians who have sat down believing that that country belongs to them. Well, some of them got in via some kind of forgery. Some got in through, uh, you know, elections that are not really clear. Same like what happened in Gabon. This man has been there. His father has been there. It has become a monarchy. Well, in the case of Nigeria, Bola Tunubu got in and certain people said he did not win the election. The, he's been dragged here and there, tribunal here and there. And um, there are people who are hoping and believing that before the one year of Bola Metunumbu as president, or let us even say eight months of Bola Metunumbu in Aso Villa, he will be kicked out. The tribunal will conclude. It has never happened in Nigeria. No. Maybe senatorial seat and some other. Maybe. Maybe. But not presidential position. It has never happened. Nobody has been dragged to the court and eventually the court will announce saying that this number two or number three or number four won the election well one of the legal representative in fact is the number one representative of bola at the tribunal is called olani Pekun. he has something to say to the nigerian masses i mean to the masses and also to the military because of the secret meetings that are ongoing plots cool meetings here and there and for those who are disgruntled, for those who believe that Bola Metinubu did not win the election, and for those who are sending messages to the military, if they really did, uh, before the military came out saying that um, certain individuals are sending messages to us, telling us that we should, uh, uh, you know, house out this president and military should take over. Well, let us hear what Olani Pekun has to say, because it is getting serious. And when I say serious... Anything can happen any moment from now. It will be like dream. And when you wake, you realize that it's a vision. Let us get right into it. And before we President, proceed, President, like and share this video, subscribe to this channel. To Jonathan, to Buhari, and now to President Timbo. The question is this, why, why, why? It is because we keep more into our tribal nationalities than the Nigerian enterprise. Let us face it. There is a proverb in Yoruba land that if two children of the same parents, they are called, they lock themselves into a room. And now when the door is open, they are this smart. They have not spoken truth to themselves. An average Yoruba man an average house of Lani man, an average Igbo man, an average Chekri man, will first of all want to say, I key into my ethnic nationality before Nigeria. It doesn't happen in America. It doesn't happen in Britain. It doesn't happen in Canada. In Canada, they have also diverse nationalities, the French and the English. But there is a nation that binds them together. Are we, when are we getting there? And how do we get there? There is much disunity in this country. In America, diversity in unity. Our own is diversity in disunity. Let's face it. There is diversity in unity as in diversity in disunity. 
and it's part of the takeaways that we have to think of. And I'm happy. Ministers are here. Leaders of our forces are here. Then how do we do it? I don't have the solution, but the solution is for us to think first. Like JFK said, think what of what you can do for America, not what America can do for you. Are we ready to leave this venue today to say that, okay, we are going to say we think more or first of what the country can do for us, not what we can take from the country. But we can only do that also. The right conditions precedent if leaders are the led, if we have a change of heart. President Tinobu said a lot of things, he's been talking and saying the right thing, but there is a difference between saying it and walking the talk. And it's not a walk in the park. Seriously, he said, ministers, you have not been appointed by me to serve your ethnic nationalities. Good talk. Ministers, you have not been appointed by me to come and loot the treasury. Good talk. The vice president said, and rightly too, that Nigeria is in a mess economically. We are in a mess. People are angry. And if that comes from the best president, or if it came from the right president, very cerebral, he is not a loose talker. But what he's saying is obvious. It's just a truism. It only needed him to say it. I needed us, or needs us at this country to also re echo it. The economy is bad. There is transfer aggression. And part of the solution is this we have to think, those of us here, we have to be introspective, retrospective, and also be considerate and be thoughtful. Otherwise, we are all in danger. It's not a question of the, people, the politicians alone. My love, Honorable Attorney General, J.K. Gasama, if I Oh, no, you know you are big. You are more in danger than me. <laughs> we are in danger. Because we, everybody, anybody in the street who is poor, who is hungry, who is thirsty, who is ruthless, who doesn't have any job, things wrongly, but that's his own conviction that all of us here, and each and every one of us here, is an oppressor. They don't want to care. Whether she can learn the bonds in midnight oil. Reading, reading, reading. They don't want to care. Once they know that you can make ends meet, they see you as an oppressor. That is the that is what you and me, all of us gathered here today to come and honor this gentleman. Let us go out with that same song that we are all in danger. Welcome back, welcome back. Now there are those who are saying that Tolani Peku is not sincere. They are telling him not to sell to us this stupidity. He shouldn't tell us this story that uh, we are wiser than that. Now, he made reference to a Yoruba adage proverb that if um, two children or two people, two friends fighting each other, having issues, if they go into a room and, you know, they come out smiling, it means they've not told themselves the truth. But if they come out with their eyes and their faces, you know, red and everyone is angry, you should know that they have really dealt with the matter on ground. And now what does that imply? Well, I will leave that for you to conclude upon. What is he trying to say? He talked about diversity, diversity in this, but ours is diversity in disunity. Meaning that uh, now that Bola Metunubu is the president of Nigeria, rather than people coming on together, though, I mean, coming around him and trying to put things right, they are not. They... I've also pointed out, a lot of people have pointed out that Bola Ahmed Tinubu sees beyond party, that uh, if not for certain people who said, no, you cannot um, put in someone who is a member of a different party, it, it, that person cannot be appointed. It is not possible. We have worked for that party and we should be able to enjoy the fruits of our labor. Of course, it makes sense. But this man is someone who wants to show his, um, you know, um, his universal orientation and um, he has promised that he's going to connect dots together he's going to bring and foster peace and harmony he's going to connect he's not going to be into if possible if possible he could even give a uh, peter will be you know appointment here and there of course i know this does not sound well with those who are obedient they'll be like no what appointment let him step down there is no election that opponents will agree that the other person won or the other candidate won. It's just not possible. Even in the United States of America, 
um, it will take um, that extra. Particularly that of Africa is going to be extremely difficult because politicians do not go in for service. They go to service their pockets. And if, if remnant droppings remain and you call them Saibaba, Ogasa, Master, my father, our father, Maybe something might drop on your table. They are there like they are, they are, they are it's it's a fifth dome. It's like they are they are the king, they are the alpha, they are the omega. That is the culture, that is the tradition, that is the way of thinking that has become the norm in Africa, and that's where the problem lies. If a politician steps in and is there to serve, and he is also put on minimum wage, not uh, millions of naira allocated to them, and the next thing you hear from Criminals who are senators is, do you know Nigeria? Do you know the level of Nigeria? Do you know what Nigeria is? And I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean by do you know what? There should be a minimum wage for politicians. You can earn millions of naira. You can say, no, we have to uh, match up with the United States of America when you are not providing what the United States of America is providing for its citizen or a citizen. You cannot do the same. You cannot compare yourself to the United Kingdom and say, oh, do you know how much they earn in pounds and you try to do the back, you know, the, the forex. No, it doesn't work that way. There should be a particular amount that should be paid to a president and also to senators. I think these are one of the ideas that uh, Peter Obi came up with. And obviously, he's not going to win that election, even if he won. I, I don't even know if he won. He's not going to be allowed because senators will not permit all of those ideas that he came up with saying that, you know, I am going to introduce this. I'm going to, it's just not going to work. You shut your mouth, you go in there, and then you act. But he thought probably saying all of these things will make people vote for him. Well, as it is, let's go back to the main issue on ground because it is sensitive. And that is the reason why lawyer Olani Kweku, senior advocate of Nigeria, decided to talk about the presidential election and the controversies because it's not just about the election. I mean, civilian stalking is also about the push and the move by certain individuals, such as, in quote, secretly, Obasanjo. Obasanjo served military. He wanted to extend his term, third time. They chased him out. They couldn't do it. He's angry. He doesn't even like Bola Tunubu. He served his own time. Nothing has really changed in Nigeria. He has done all with all the articles. Nothing changed in Nigeria. Is, or do you have constant electricity? Is portable water running your homes? You, can you can you say okay, uh, okay, eighty percent of our life is better? No, he did all he did and nothing worked. Now Bola Metinubu is there. People are screaming. Of course, things are hard. Things are difficult, and people are beginning to press the military to hijack the government and. I'll tell you this for free. The military or military government and the civilian government, when it comes to corruption, they are the same. They are criminals. No difference. We've seen and tested it. We've seen it several times. We are talking about military rule that spanned more than 10 years. We've seen it. We know. We saw all that happened. They are thieves. They are all criminals. There's nothing new. Even in the civilian government, we saw and we are seeing the attitude of the military, the criminal activities of the military at the creek where crude oil is pumped. We are seeing and we have seen how they have handled the terrorist business in the north and many others. Are we going to talk about countless military officers that buried money underneath some drainage somewhere in Sokaway or in their houses? How? Then, do you think those type of people are different from the same civilian criminals who will buy a house somewhere, put security details there, and put money in it? At times, they even forget that money has been kept in those places. This is what we are talking about. It is so sad, so difficult to kind of put off. It's just so difficult to understand why. But then, when I looked at it, I realized how everything stems from wickedness. When wickedness becomes a practice, becomes a way of life, it becomes what you are. This is what it will become. I'm not even talking of fear of God here because many don't even have it. I don't know what your thoughts are as regards this one because um, the drums are rolling. Yes, the drums are rolling. And the talk, the talk about a coup is loud. It is so loud. We do not pray for violence, but it is so loud because the... Past NSAS 
has not settled well yet. People are aggrieved. People are angry. So, if military intervention, as some people might call it, or military takeover or coup, is what some people are talking about. I don't know where we are heading to with that also. I don't know. What are your thoughts about this one? You heard what Loyal Lanikpeku said. This is his argument. Of course, that is what his principal paid him to do. But is it making sense? Is he saying the truth? Or is he just speaking from two sides of his mouth because he has been paid to do so? Like and share this video. Subscribe to this channel. See you in the next update.